and I am going to talk about Spider-Man, Spider-Man. The new movie Spider-Man Homecoming got released on DVD and Blu-ray yesterday. I bought the 4K version, and this is my second favorite film of the year. The only film I like better is Logan. This has Tom Holland plays Peter Parker Spider-Man. He signed on to make six MCU films. Yes, Spider-Man Homecoming takes place in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So he is an Avenger, kind of, sort of. You got one of the best villains in The Vulture, Adrian Toomes. Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man shows up. John Favreau as Happy Hogan returns. You got Hot Aunt May, played by Marissa Tomei, and Jacob Bartland plays Peter Parker's best friend, Ned. This film is my favorite fil second favorite film of the year. It is my top five favorite MCU films. Ant-Man's gotta be number one. Ant-Man is just a fantastic movie, which I appreciate much more than others. I have a review on my YouTube channel, a couple of reviews if you want to know my thoughts on Ant-Man. The Avengers is my second favorite film. There was just something special about seeing all your superhero friends on screen at the same time. Captain America, Winter Soldier. Now, the first Captain America film was good. The second Captain America film blew it out of the water. And then fourth favorite MC MCU film is Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just something that was totally unexpected. Something came out of left field entirely. And it's just something different and unique, and then Spider-Man Homecoming fits in right after those great movies. And I'm one of those guys that I did not want another Spider-Man movie. We've done it before. It's been both done well. Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, and it's been done okay. It's amazing Spider-Man, and it's been done really bad. Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 2. So they could have screwed this up. The thing is, they didn't. And one of the big reasons why they did not screw this movie up is Tom Holland. Tom Holland plays Spider-Man. He's been in a couple movies before. I did not see them. I was going to see In the Heart of the Sea that came out a couple of years ago. That was a Ron Howard film. It had Chris Hemsworth, who was Thor, and Tom Holland, who was Spider-Man. That was on my list to see, and ha ha ha, no pun intended. It's a movie about a whale, and it was the crew that inspired Moby Dick. I was going to see that. I never did. It's been on video for like a year or two, and I still haven't seen it. But that was a lot of people's introductions to Tom Holland. And Tom Holland is this guy who is a dancer, is a gymnast, and this athleticism makes him the perfect Spider-Man. This athleticism makes him so good in this role because he can contour his bodies in ways that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire couldn't and he is the closest to age in to actual Peter Parker and this is the only character that I believe only actor of those previous ones that I believe is Peter Parker and he does a great job as both Peter Parker and Spider-Man Tobey Maguire was a good Peter Parker, but he just seemed too old. Andrew Garfield was a good Spider-Man, but I didn't really buy him as Peter Parker because he's the kind of guy who is on his skateboard, and I'm like, Peter Parker is supposed to be the nerd? And he's supposed to... I just don't believe you skateboarding around town is that nerd? So, Tom Holland, when you have him... And he's talking to his best friend Ned in the hallway after school. And Ned's like, hey, you want to come over and build my Lego Death Star? And he's like, I'm sorry, I can't. I got the Stark internship. Which is keyword for I'm Spider-Man. And this film follows Civil War. Where all the superheroes got into factions over should they work for the government or should they not. Should they be arrested for not following what the government says? 
And then Tony Stark recruits Spider-Man. He has to meet all the other Avengers. It's kind of like an Avenger tryout. And he thinks, great, every weekend I'm going to be fighting with the Avengers. Well, six months later, he's a high school kid. He's steal he's pe going after people that are stealing bikes. He's helping old ladies cross the street, and they're buying him churros. He is the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man when he wants to be an Avenger. Sometimes life doesn't give you what you want, it gives you what it needs. And I'm just going to talk. This movie is a little something for everyone. It is a high school movie at its best. You have the guy like, I got a test. I can't fight crime. I got a test. And he's hanging out with his best friend. He's on the Scholastic Decathlon. He's a high school kid. And 2017 is the year for high school movies. You had... Power Rangers in March, and Lego Ninjago a couple weeks ago. I got a review on that from the show on my YouTube channel. So Spider-Man Homecoming is a great high school film, but it's also a great action film. And you got great set pieces. The Washington Monument. The Fairy. And then you got stuff where there's running through a suburban yard. But he, Tom Holland, is so great as Peter Parker and as Spider-Man and does the balance of the two characters better than the two previous actors before him. And I love this movie. This movie, unlike The Foreigner, the villain is developed and the villain is complex. You have Adrian Toomes, played by Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is one of the greatest actors working today. He is so good in everything I've seen him. Even in a movie which isn't that great, like American Assassin, I love the performance that Michael Keaton gives. Michael Keaton plays Adrian Toomes, and he's this guy who scavenged. He's a contractor. So he got a contract to scavenge New York after the Battle of New York with the Avengers fighting the Chitauri. And he's going to pick up all the Atari weaponry and Atari ships and stuff that crashed in this battle. But the Department of Damage Control, founded by Tony Stark, is like, no, the government has the rights and the government is the only one that can take this technology and, and use it. And it's going to be put in a vault and nobody's going to touch it. And he's like... Screw that. I have a wife, I have a child, and I have every right, as everybody else, to use this and to profit off of this. It happened in my backyard, New York City, and that's what he does. He takes his technology, he makes weapons to it, and he's just trying to make a living so he can support his wife and daughter. And this is such a complex villain. He is a blue-collar worker with a business. He is a startup. He is an entrepreneur. It might not be the most legal business, but it is a business, and it was a business, and he was supporting his family. He is a parallel to Tony Stark in many aspects, where he is a businessman, he may not be a billionaire, he might have a few hundred thousand maybe, but he is not the billionaire. He is the blue collar guy who the, raises his family, do a little business. But when his business gets threatened and his lifestyle gets threatened by Spider-Man, he's like, he must be destroyed. And this hero-villain relationship is the best part of Spider-Man Homecoming. This film is spectacular, and this is fantastic. And Spider-Man 1 is great, Spider-Man 2 is great. I believe this film blows them out of the water. And its connection to the MCU helps it so much. The casting of this movie is near perfect. They took a guy who I was unfamiliar with, and I'm like, I hope he's Spider-Man for the next 10 years. I see Tom Holland, and I'm like, 
nobody can be Spider-Man except for Tom Holland. And I believe this is the second best movie of the year. I believe this is the best Spider-Man movie. I believe this is a 10 out of 10. If you have not seen Spider-Man Homecoming, I could not recommend it enough.